Um, let me just get the VOD up quickly. Um, did you want me to talk a little bit about why I saw like beforehand, or or do you just want me to go into it with like the examples? Yeah, we can do a little uh, free talking here. All right. Um, let me just get the video up. Um, yes, yeah, so the main things I wanted to touch on was um, you wanted to talk about uh, approaching. Um, and I felt like the general theme I saw from the uh, from the game was just like a lot of the time you were you were approaching from too far away, um, which makes it very easy for him to like move out of the way and just like hit you, um, which is probably why he's playing like he is as well because it's like he's getting rewarded for his patient play because you're kind of like throwing yourself at him from the wrong like ranges. Um, so that was one thing. Um, and I also felt like when you did approach, it was like very committal stuff, like high aerials um, was the main one. Um, and it's just like they're really good if you're quite close and like if it has a good chance of hitting, then they've got like really high reward, right? But when you're kind of far away and it's got very low chance of working, then you're suddenly taking a lot of risks that are like high risk and like medium reward. Um, yeah, which... I, I will say that he usually like running shines me, so I like to throw out early stuff just to catch him running. Uh, okay, yeah, because I the the main thing I saw was like he doesn't actually move forward to hit you a lot of the time, so I was yeah, like, he, well, why is he doing that? <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> damn it, Th that's one of those things where like it's hard to tell from one game, like you know the meta you guys have and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and then. Uh... So I just need to set up the uh, screen capture. Um, so then the other things, um, I felt like your punish game was kind of weak sometimes as well, but um, we can save that for like another time because you said you wanted to talk about more like general concepts. Um, but I, I think the general theme with your punishes is like, it felt like you were concentrating on getting the just hitting him in some way instead of like hitting him in a way that leads into a better combo afterward um yeah so i just think more when when you're watching your combos back or whatever think more about like what's the position this puts him into after um well, i'll point out as we go along but i won't like dwell on it too much um, there was one situation where i kind of um because i've been practicing runoff shines because mm -hmm. um, of flash <laughs> <laughs> and uh so, like, there's one point where I get, like, two up tilts on the top platform. Yeah. And I could have, like, literally just up tilted or stand it in place and shined and probably gotten the kill. Yeah. But I actually, I go for the runoff shine because I've been practicing, like, up tilt, they DI off the platform, and then I just run off, shine them, and then wait back, wait land back on. Yeah, I think so I remember you seeing tell, that. You could tell I wasn't thinking in the moment. <laughs> yeah, it is hard as well. Um, yeah, it's just something to think about. Um, and then... There's also a lot of the time when you did approach and, like, he didn't get hit. A lot of the time you do, like, turn around up, up tilt or stuff like that afterward. Um, and I feel like the the sort of the meta for Fox at the moment, or lots of characters versus Falco, is they either, like, hard read, like, when you're going to nair in at them or whatever, or they just, like, wait extra long for you to do, like, a second thing and then they go in after that. So... You kind of get some free time after you whiff sometimes to do whatever you want. And like you can use that time to go over and hit them or you could move out of the way or something like that. But I feel like throwing out a second attack in, in place at the moment anyway is like pretty... It, it's like obvious in the, in the meta at the moment. Um, it could change in the future, but I'll point it out when it happens. But I'd like to talk about yeah. that as well. Don't know if you have any thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's the Falco Ditto in me. <laughs> take laser, turn around, up tilt for the aerial. Yeah, it's um, it's something West does a lot as well, and like a lot of Falcos have come up on West being like really good. So then it's just like a habit that sticks. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, and then yeah, specifically versus uh Danilo as well. I feel like like you say he plays quite campy when uh in neutral. Like, he doesn't 
engage much, but then I felt like once he does have any sort of advantage, like either you whiffing or like you jump something like that, he immediately like goes full throttle and tries to like win the like go over and hit you. Um, he'll never try to approach me first unless I bait him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was gonna say like the stuff you want to be trying to do would be more like movement baits, like jump in and then wave on back or like double jump to bait him into like moving under you um or just like committing less so then that doesn't give him a cue to like move in um but yeah i think they were the main things i wanted to talk about so um share my screen uh can you see uh one sec all right yeah, I can see that. I see your OBS. All right, cool. Or my OBS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, um, it's like this now, for instance. Um, so you're at this range, which is like a roll distance, roughly. Um, so the only way this now is hitting is like if he runs at you, which you, you did say he does like running shine sometimes, right? At this range. But then I feel like if you're going to call out Running Shine, you'd want to go for something that gives you a higher reward. So like a late dare in place or like run up grabbing him out of his run or um, like dash back, wave dash in, shine, like stuff like that. Because um, the dare, even if it hits, like it hits here and it doesn't lead to anything. Um, so it just felt like a very... Uh, yeah, if you'd have done, like, a late one, but then I think it doesn't hit him running forward if you're doing, like, sort of mid-height aerials, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this nest specifically is a bit better when, um, when you're slightly closer. So, where did you hit the laser? So if you were, like, under the edge of the platform... Then I think the Nair's pretty good because it can catch his jump and full hop's like a really priority option for Fox. So doing the Nair at like that range would be really good, I think. But when you're this far back, he can just jump and you'll avoid it anyway. So I How would you suggest practicing the spacing for that? Or is it just about like watching and like learning? Uh well practicing like recognizing the spacing. Yeah, because like a lot of times I feel like I, I have like go ahead to do that that instant nair right after my laser, but like I'm way too far away usually, or I'm like slightly out of the way. Yeah, so I feel like with this one you could have seen him. He did full hop drill, so then you know he's gonna get hit by the laser, and then you just sort of recognize this spacing as like I can't like yolo aerial in here. I have to like be a bit safer or make like a harder read. So during the air, or is during the laser. Yeah, yeah, so you, so you press B, and then you see what he's doing. And you see he was full hop drilling, so he doesn't really have any control on the spacing. Um, it's a bit harder if he's, like, dash dancing on the ground, because he could be in lots of places. But with this one, I feel like you, you definitely had, like, a big um, cue to know, like, what the spacing was going to be. Um, so, yeah, so options I'd be thinking about here would be, like, approaching laser, or you could do a, a half laser... Or you could dash dance and then do this now, which is good as well. Uh, I just think... Just, what did he do right after? Uh, so he does... I think he tried to up tilt. Up tilt or dash back. It's hard to tell because he might have... Because um, he might have missed his dash back. But yeah, like dash dance would have worked against both of those. Approaching laser is like the, the high risk, high reward option. Because if he up tilts you, then he gets like a combo. But then if you catch him dashing back, that's really good for you. Um, but yeah, I, I just wouldn't be thinking about doing high approaching aerial at this range at all. Uh, so yeah. You should have killed me for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the situation I was talking about. Yeah. I, I go for the runoff shine, but then I recognize, like, midway, I'm like, wait a minute, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, it's really hard, like, at some sense you can react on the up tilt to see what you have to do next, because this one you just needed to up tilt again, but it's a really hard reaction. I think at this percent, actually, you have to sort of read, but once you get to, like, the 50s, it's uh, a bit easier. And then, like, this is another one as well, where, like, 
until it sort of ends the combo if it hits. Whereas if you do like jump shine, then you've still got a yeah, chance to follow up. Land. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like I said, I won't f focus too much on um, punish game stuff. Yeah, so do you see how on, on this one, like, he, um, you whiff coming down, and then he does this, like, extra long dash dance. And, yeah. Because you spot dodge super late, it actually catches him. But this is a spot where there's a few times later on where um, you do up tilt instantly, and he, like, grabs you for it. Um, so a lot of the time, you can just, like, jump over and hit him here. You could do, like, dash approaching aerial or dash approaching laser. But... Uh, I think because of the percents, that's a pretty good risk to take. But if it was the other way around, then maybe you'd want to wave dash away or roll or full hop or something like that. Um, short, short hop's good too, in case he dares, right? Because then I can just get, uh, I get frame advantage. Yeah, yeah, short hop's good too. You, you just want to think about, like, after I whiff this, like, how is he going to try and punish me? Because I feel like people sometimes assume that they're going to get punished every time they whiff, but that's just, like, not how the game works i guess is the best way to put it um yeah no i definitely think that way sometimes yeah because like for him to punish this he has to exactly read how you're going to do the back air like your fast fall your um how you're going to land with it like you could have done if he tried to whiff punish grab this you could have done like no fast fall drift away back air and then he won't get it so it's actually quite a big risk for them to um to hard read something like this, whereas they could just wait and then do the up tilt that every Falco ever does and then get the grab that way. Um, so I think getting good at those situations like after you whiff is like super important. Yeah, so I think this was a, would have been a good situation for a Nair, right? Because, um, this range. yeah, because he, he jumps, so he would have got hit by the Nair. So I think this is the range where you want to be thinking about um, narrowing. And then if he wave dashes back out of shield, I think it clips him anyway. Um, the approaching laser was fine because it covered, like, if he wave dashed back or if he, um, if he didn't jump, basically, but he just happened to jump. Um, obviously, the, the Nair's risky as well at this range because he could hold shield and then shine out of shield you. Um, so you could also go for some safer ways to beat the jump, like, you could do dash back and then back air or laser um so yeah i think just thinking about the different laser spacings the main ones are like this spacing uh the one i showed before where you're at like max aerial range um and when you've got a laser light on top of that shield i think they're the three like big spacings to like get good at recognizing do you think I should practice, um, like, my full drifts and stuff and just, like, get get used to, like, how far I can move out of, like, a laser? Yeah, yeah, just... Yeah, the, the drift affects it, too, like, where you end up landing um, from these sorts of things. But, yeah, just, like, thinking about what your options are in each of these that are relevant to what he wants to do. Um, so, yeah... So then at this range, I like how you just, like, shot again in place. And you see how, like, he tries to... He might have tried to wave dash forward. Um, but then even if he got the wave dash forward, he would have just ended up at that, like, close range spacing that we just saw. And then that's good for you, right? Um, so I think at that spacing where you ned at the start, like, lasering again is really good. Um, because the situation usually changes into a better one for you after you shoot the, the next laser. Yeah, so I like this one. So, like, you, you empty land instead of throwing out an attack, and then you hit him trying to uh, with punish you. So that was what I was saying about, like, you're in a pretty bad position here, right? So he just goes YOLO and, like, tries to hit you. And you, like, call him out for it. So I think more of that stuff's good to do. And, and if he dash dance, that would just get on the ground for free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's another one where you like just approach from a bit too far away. Uh, it was a bit scary because he was like quite close as you were whiffing the jab. Um, but again, I think if you versus this guy specifically, if you just replaced all of your 
approaching early aerials with approaching laser, I think it would work out very well. Um, yeah. Or with like dash dance and then approach with an aerial. Because at least if you do the dash dance as well, you can sort of see that they're waiting for it and then you can like mix up your drift or something like that to make it a bit harder for them. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll ignore it, don't worry. I'm not sure what I was going for. I think it's just like a CPU habit. Because like, I just try to save them for the style. <laughs> but yeah, so you see how they're spacing again? Uh, like... That wasn't really an approach time here, but you see how like he's just always trying to like move around your your aerial threat range, mm -hmm. so he's always like jumping or dashing back or something like that. So you can kind of like use that respect he's giving you to unlock other things you can do. So like you could do dash forward, jump shine here, or you could dash dance over here and wait for him to move. Um, but yeah, I think just like thinking a step ahead with some of your approaches, because he obviously. His whole game plan is like playing around your aerial and then getting a grab or like waiting for you to whiff and then pressuring you. Uh, so if you just don't whiff in the first place, then like he's kind of screwed, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, kind of slow down a bit too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, there's a moment in, I think it's this stock, where like you play a bit slower and you sort of like move around a bit before you approach and it makes it really difficult for him to like hit you. Yeah, so this is one where he like actually calls out how you're gonna land. Um, but again, like you can do some tricky stuff. Like you could do no fast fall either direction. You could fast fall and then wave land. You could shoot a laser here as, as well. I don't know how good you are at double jump laser. Um, um, I can do it in practice. I haven't really tried it too much in games though. Okay, I, I I've sucked at it for a very long time, and it's only just now that I'm starting to use it. But it's like insane in spots like this. It just always works at the moment. Just how like people play around Falco in there, they always like wait for him to land and then hit him, or they like wait extra long and then hit him. So shooting the laser here is, or like getting good at shooting the laser here is really important, I think. But um, yeah, with with people that play like this, I think getting really good as well at like mixing up timings or like drifts, uh, and like mixing up coming down with laser as well is like really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to practice double jump lasers. <laughs> yeah. It's... I, I recognize that a lot of times I just do the autopilot there. Yeah. I'm starting to like see my bad habits a lot more now. Yeah, and the annoying thing is as well, because I got caught by this for a long time, where I'd land with the laser here, but I wouldn't fast fall it. So then the timing he moves in at just covers no fast fall laser as well. Um, so you have to get good at actually fast fall lasering, which is hard, but, you know... It, this difference. You shoot the laser and, or you have to fast fall and then immediately shoot the laser, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just do, like, I do the double jump. I just practice, like, jump, double jump, and then fast fall either direction as well. Because um, I find the turnaround one's harder. But, um, yeah, like I say, because a lot of people play against Falco like this, and you just got to remember that them punishing your landing is like a read, so it's still like a mix-up even though it feels kind of like a bad spot for you which is why it's even favored for me yeah sometimes it, it depends on the person you're playing against but um but yeah that's why west Wolves, like does really good in these sorts of situations as well because he's like the best probably the best player at mixing up all his little timings and stuff but yeah you see um like you wave punishes the up yeah i meant to wave dash off by the way after the shield drop ah, I okay try to, like bear yeah yeah, yeah. I've been practicing uh, wave dash off laser as well. <laughs> it's pretty good. I didn't realize. Um, I thought you had to turn after you do the wave dash, do the turn laser, but it just like does it when you press B, which I didn't realize. Yeah, and you can actually uh, keep your direction if you just like tilt your stick, I believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've been practicing that as well. Um, but yeah, so when you when you said um, he was running shiny a lot, I think. It's important to make the distinction of like what situations he's running shining you in, because um, it it 
seems to me like he isn't doing it when you're in like what I call true neutral, where like neither of you's in any like lag or anything. Um, like he isn't taking your lasers and then running at you and shining. It feels like it's more like these sorts of spots where you've already put yourself in in lag and then he just calls out a timing with the running shine. Um, because yeah, you can end up like seeing something somebody's doing, but then adapting in like the wrong spots. Um, like say you start just throwing out down as in place because you think he's running shining, but then he's still just waiting for you to whiff, so then it doesn't like work out anyway. If that makes sense. Yeah, I I could do drift back on the down air if I think he's gonna running shine, and then even if he doesn't, I'm still in a decent position, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, it's still a bit harder for him to uh to punish. Um. Yeah, I, th I think it was this interaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's just waiting for you to like throw out a back air or put yourself in lag. So then, when you, once you don't, he's like, I don't know how to approach without frame <laughs> advantage. <laughs> so then, yeah, you just hit him, right? Because he's. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you're gonna, you know, move. Do you think? Yeah. <laughs> but like the other thing here as well is like, you mixed up your timing on when you did the aerial as well because you did like dash dance, and you waited for like three lasers and then approached. Or two lasers. Whereas before it was like you were just doing like laser aerial, and it felt like a very uh, like level one timing. Yeah, um, very yeah. So again, versus people that sort of play the style of just like waiting for you to run at them, um, like mixing up shooting two lasers and then a dash dance and then aerialing in stuff like that is like pretty effective as well. I didn't. Do you want to talk about the ledge as well, by the way, or? Um... Yeah, we can talk about it. Okay. Um, I think the best way to do it is if we if we just watch through the game normally, and then we can go back and look at all the ledge interactions. I think that's right. probably better once I've like pointed out all of the sort of notes I had before. Um, I hate that combo. <laughs> 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 it's so stupid. Um. Yeah, so this is another one where you got a laser up kind of close and it felt like you didn't really know what to do off of it. Um, so here I'd be thinking like up tilt or like dash back, short hop back air, or even you can like nair him here. Um, so yeah, I think the main, the main problem with the approaches is just like you're not recognizing the spacing you got your laser at well enough and then picking the right options. Um, yeah, so you see again how, like, where you space, like, you're all the way over here, so it's very easy for him to just, like, what does he do here? He just full hops. And, like, even if he'd have, even if the platform wasn't there, I like, the down I wouldn't have hit. So you want to be wave dashing down, like, here. You want to be, like, just outside of his up smash range. Because that's like his furthest reaching hitbox here. I need to recognize threat ranges more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And a big thing is, yeah, a big thing is like it changes when he's shielding and when he's not as well. Um, so like if he was just dash dancing here, then I think this is a more reasonable spacing because then you're outside the range of like Nair. But when he's in shield, like obviously it's a smaller threat range. Um, do you think I should have just inch forward a little bit then, or like like shot a laser and inch forward a little bit? I think so that, I just go for a dare. I think half laser is really good here, uh, like a half approaching one, just because like for Fox to how do I word this? So like the problem with the normal approaching laser a lot of the time is if he throws out any sort of hitbox near him, then you get hit right. Like, if he does full up aerial, or if he up tilts, or if he nares out a shield, or whatever. But to call out, like, a half approaching laser, he has to specifically, like, challenge this empty space, basically. Um, so he could do, like... Yeah, he could do, like, wave dash, up smash, then. But then, if he's, like, whiffing in empty space, that's, like, amazing for you, right? Because then you can just start waiting and then hitting him. Um... So I think that would be something to consider here. And it also covers, like, full hop quite well. Uh, and you can cover, like, rolls with it as well. You're just sort of, like, inching forward and then playing a better position. Um, 
You can also do the approaching laser if you think he's just going to stay here. But a lot of the time, foxes really like to move out of the way, and especially this guy, who just does not want to play against you on the ground unless it's on his terms. So, um, so yeah, I think I think uh, like a half approaching laser would be really good in these sorts of spots when you're at that range. So yeah, this is another one where you like tried to down air. I don't know if it's the running shine thing you were talking about before. Like, you uh, thought you were running shine there? Where? So, you crouch here, and then he rolls away. And then you see him running towards you. And then you yeah. just sort of down air at him. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely one of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so so like I was saying, he isn't actually running shiny when it's this sort of position where nobody's really got an advantage. It's always, like, when he has his own, like, big advantage. So in these spots, I would be looking for him to do, like, his full hops, his dash dances, stuff like that. Um, like, it's almost like he plays pretty scared against Farco, I feel like. Because he's not willing to just run up and hit you. He's always, like, waiting for you to do something first. And if, if people are waiting for you to do something first, that gives you time to laser, which usually you're scared to do because, like, it takes a lot of time, right? But, yeah, you know... Of, it feels like a lot of low-level players will just... They'll just, like, throw a move out, so, like, you can't just immediately laser. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, okay. like, it's kind of like that low to mid-level transition of, like, knowing the mix-up. Yeah, definitely. I think as you, like, especially at the level you're at, I feel like a lot of people play this way versus Falco, where, like, they play really defensive until they get an opening, and then they just go ham, because they don't want you to get your lasers out again. And then once you start to get to high levels, or, like, versus some people that play really aggressive versus Falco, um they start, like, just attacking you before you even do anything again. Um, so I think, yeah, versus, versus those styles, it's good to, like, throw out these preemptive attacks. Um, like, down as in place, or approaching aerials, or... Um, so do, do you think that in, like, low level, it's... the I should be very careful, because they're just going to probably throw out an immediate hitbox, and then at mid-level, it's kind of like, they'll try to bait me out more and then at like high level it's more it's both uh, it's more of a mix up yeah basically i think at low level a lot of the time you can just get away with lasering someone and then just waiting until they throw out a move which is essentially what this guy's doing to you right mm -hmm. um not to call you low level but <laughs> that, is, that is like basically what he's what a lot of people do because it's like a very it's effective range yeah, yeah it's like a very effective strategy and like they don't have to put themselves at any risk really right unless you take all of these like free lasers he's given you and take all this free space um so yeah and obviously it isn't like cut and drive always low level mid level whatever but i feel like that's the general trend i see but like you will play mid level players that have watched mango from 2013 and only do run up shield and running shine um and then you just gotta sort of see that and play a bit differently um, yeah, that's another thing I've been working on is adapting to my opponent's habits and playstyle. Yeah, of yeah. Judging them based on skill. Yeah, and that's one of those things that, like, especially with those uh, laser spacings I was talking about, you can sort of classify how people are going to play those sorts of situations and just, like, pick out the moves you want to do to beat that. So, like, if I was playing somebody who's watched Mango Loads, then if I got a laser at that sort of close spacing, I'd be, like, throwing out down as in place or like back airing them because i know they're just going to try and like move forward and hit me whereas versus this guy i'd be like trying to constantly laser and like take space and not give him any any like easy openings if that makes sense yeah um okay let me just check if that covered everything i had um yeah so we can talk about the ledge a bit um is there any specific, uh, like, things Fox does when you're on the ledge that you find difficult? I just, I feel I don't have a good grasp on my ledge options, like, as a mix-up. Mm -hmm. Versus whatever they're going to do. I usually don't even think about what they're doing. Okay, so, so you feel like, I'm guessing you know, like, what you can do from ledge. Or do yeah, we need I to go have, over that as well? I have a lot of mix-ups, I just haven't implemented a lot of them i just most of the, most of the time it's double lasers ledge dash uh 
instead of doing aerial from the ledge, I like to do uh, shine, like shine stall. Like you drop down, shine, turn around, uh, back air, and actually. Yeah, yeah. Try, no, I know about it. Try to punish it, yeah. Um, or they try to punish immediate down air from ledge. Mm -hmm. Um. So if it is it like you don't, uh, you don't really know how your ledge options interact with their options. Yeah. Is that how you okay? Um, so the way I like to think about, uh, this specifically is, I think of it as if it was, like, we're playing neutral normally, but the person on the ledge, um, gets invincible startup on whatever they're doing. Um, so it's basically like a corner situation, like, say you're in the corner, let me just pause it on whatever, you end up in the corner. So it's like this position. But you get invincible startup on whatever you choose to do, so long as you're executing properly, obviously. Um, and I don't know how much you've thought about this position of like you in the corner and them uh, uh, pressure you. I hold down here because I'm assuming they're gonna shine me and try to get a free double shine. Or uh, not like double shine, but shine in, into like one off shine. Oh, uh, so try and think of it as if like neither of you is in lag and you're just like standing, like Fox is here oh. and Falk is there. So um, I, we talked about it a little bit in the final yeah. lesson about like if I think they're gonna do a laser, then I would uh, approach them. If I thought they were gonna come in, I would like shield or roll out or do something yeah. to get out of the corner. But I didn't really think about it versus Fox that much. Okay, that's fine. Um, so I think the main things that happen when you're on ledge is Fox either tries to run at you and shine your double lasers. Um, or he's like on the platform and then he tries to like bear you. Or if it's like FD, he does like full hop and then comes down with an aerial, right? Yeah. Does that sound? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Or um, sometimes they sort of dash dance and wait for you to throw something out as well. Um, but I feel like these are all things that also happen when you're in this position in the corner. Uh, like I'm sure you've gotten full hop back head in this spot before or dash dance grabbed or. Stuff like that. Yeah. I think there's a instance in this game where he edge guards me. Uh, he gets like three bears, I think. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I think about it as, um, like I said, like you're in this position, but um, you have invincibility on startup. So, say for example, he's doing full hop bears. Um, okay. So, can you think of anything that would beat him doing full hop bears? Are we imagining there's no platform there, or just... Yeah, yeah. Imagine it's FD. Okay, um... Turn around, up tilt. Yep. Dash, slash roll out of the corner. Yep. Um, retreat to ledge, if I'm confident in my ledge dash. Yep. Uh... Yep, yeah, I think they're all good. I, yeah, I, I would say maybe up here, but it's kind of risky. Yeah, okay, so... If you're on ledge, then... If you want to up tilt, you can get an invincible up tilt out. If you want to roll, you can get an invincible rollout. Um, you could stall on the ledge as well, and then wait for him to come down and then do something else. Um, so you see how like that the answers to that option are the same whether you're on the ledge or in the corner, right? Yeah. Um, this is one you have invincible startup. Yeah, exactly. So um, this is all provided you have good execution, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> otherwise, it's a little bit different because like then you're suddenly getting hit out of your jumps and stuff like that. Um, or you're, like, getting hit out of an air dodge. Um, yeah, so then another one would be, like, um, Fox running in and shining, right, so say if he was reading a double laser. Um, so you said Fox usually run double shines you and you hold down here, right? Yeah. Um, can you think of anything else you'd do here to sort of stop that? Uh, roll out, uh, aerial in place. Yep. Maybe full hop out of the corner, slash full hop side B. Yeah, so so you could do ledge dash full hop, you could do uh, rising aerial from ledge, or the shine stall turnaround bear thing you said. Uh, again, you could ledge dash roll. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> um, and obviously, like, yeah, like, there's there's other stuff you can do from ledge as well, like, you could do laser land and stuff like that, but I think, yeah, if you think about it like that, it becomes a lot clearer, like, what you should do. Um, and then the final one we said about was, like, him just dash dancing, right? Um, yes. So if he's just dash dancing here and you were here, what would you be thinking about doing? Uh, laser in place. Yeah. Or, well, yeah, so like double lasers from ledge. Yeah, you can do uh, double lasers from ledge. 
maybe maybe still full hop to get out of the corner. Yeah. Uh, you might want to approaching laser at him as well. So you could do ledge dash approaching laser. Um, you could like throw out a move in place to try and bait his dash and scrap. Like, yeah, I, I think I think you sort of get the gist of it now. And like, there's some it, common that, options. That's what I didn't think about was that usually when you think of ledge dash options, you only think of what you can get out invincibly. Hmm. Uh, you don't think about just having it on the startup of your your actions. Yeah, so I mean, it kind of opens up a lot of the opportunities. Yeah, I mean, like, when you think about it, all Ledge Dash does is it just puts you on the stage again. <laughs> um, yeah. Which a lot of people forget. They think that some sort of action is attached to it. But you could, if you wanted to, just Ledge Dash and then stand still. And then you're just sort of in neutral again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think about it like that. And then you've also got a few extra, like, options you can do. Like, like you said, Shine Stall, Turn Around Bear, um, Laser Land, Double Lasers. Um but yeah, so if we watch over this match now and we sort of look at it from that perspective. Um, so this time he does uh, run-up shield, right? So if you were in the corner and you thought he would do run-up shield, what would you be thinking about? Grab. <laughs> yeah, you could you could let just grab. You could um, you could roll through him if you didn't want to try and pressure him. You could let just shine and then shield pressure him. Um, yeah, just like get past him. Yeah, yeah. It all depends on the amount of risk you want to take and like how good your execution's feeling. Um, do you, do you change your options based on how you feel you're executing that day? Uh, yes. From not in every single situation because I haven't thought about the situations enough for that. But like from ledge, for example, if my ledge dashes aren't very good, I'll be doing more laser lands or aerial from ledge or um, double lasers for example. Um, or like, say it was the full hop situation from before, right? If if I'm executing really well, I'll go for more like ledge dash up tilts. Whereas if I'm executing bad, I'm still pretty confident even when I'm playing bad, that I can get a, like a ledge dash with some intangibility. So I'd go for more like ledge dash shield or ledge dash roll because they're like more lenient. Yeah, um, so it's a, spec it's a spectrum of how yeah, happy yeah. it is. Yeah, because like the the tells like the high risk, high reward technically. Because if you mess up, then you get hit out of the startup. Whereas with like Ledge Dash Shield, it's pretty hard to um, screw up. But then you also don't get as good a reward. Um, so yeah, I do change it up sometimes. Uh, and Ledge is like one of the most execution heavy parts of it. So so yeah. Um. Don't know when the next uh, situation comes up. But yeah, it just felt kind of weird watching you on ledge because um, <laughs> I guess because I like watch my own Falco or like Flash or people like that a lot, and they do like a lot of ledge dash stuff. Whereas you were doing more like double jump from ledge and like those yeah, sorts of mix-ups. Uh, I messaged you about uh, my monitor, or well, I asked you about your monitor settings. Mm. Uh, but uh, so recently, I would say like a few days ago. I actually changed my monitor settings, and it made it made uh, Netplay feel a lot better. Like ah, okay, sick. CRT. So I just started doing ledge dashes on Netplay. Oh, okay, and nice. Yeah, I forgot this is all Netplay footage, so it's like different. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so watch my CRT. I do a lot more ledge dashes. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is another one, right? Where um, he he's on the platform this time. This is also a super common like uh, option for. Fox to do to pressure Falco on ledge because obviously they can like shine you for double lasering or they can do like drop through back air and it's kind of an execution test um but yeah like if you were in the corner and you thought Fox would drop through back air like what would you be thinking about doing probably shield or roll most often yeah uh, maybe up tilt if I was confident in my timing but that's kind of hard because you could just wait for it yeah I think uh, I think those two are pretty good. Um, I'd probably look for like dash shield, just because then you can maybe shan't have shield in. Um, yeah, I get in a space a little bit. Well, sometimes like if they don't space the back air deep into the corner, you can sometimes just stand in the corner and wait for them to whiff because they usually drift it in, so they're a bit like safer. Um, so one thing you can do with ledge dash is you can do like a baby ledge dash where you go right onto the very edge of the stage. Like, I don't know if you've seen uh, Muti King does it with Moth. He does like. Uh, I haven't seen Mewtwo King, but Hacks made a video about doing that to get more gallant. 
so I, oh I'm okay you're off the concept yeah okay yeah th there's a clip of uh Mute king versus armada and he does like wave dash onto the ledge dash onto the very edge of the stage and then he forward smashes because it like sort of mixes up the spacing you because you think when people ledge dash they're gonna go all the way right mm -hmm. so if you mix up like uh going to the very edge of the stage and going really deep they have to sort of like play from different positions um to hit you um so yeah that could be something you could do against this as well where you do a really small ledge dash and then you uh you can like whiff punish i think i have a clip of me doing that, actually uh uk crew passing Oh, I can find it later, but yeah, I've got like a clip of me using it there, and I think it'll be pretty. It'll be a bit easier to like show you instead of um, try and explain it with words, you know. Yeah. Do you think I should practice SDIing that up here? By the way. Mm, the yeah, side platform tech chase. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know how to do it more consistently now, I just haven't practiced it. Yeah, there's a few things I'd say about this. So first of all, you want to uh, DI the throw into the corner. Uh, like over here. Yeah. Because um, that just makes it a bit harder, because he can just jump in place here, right? Whereas if you DI over here, he has to like dash jump, or he has to do like dash shield stop jump, which is just a bit harder. Um, and then once you're there, you can either do slide off DI at this percent, or you can SDI. Um, I think it's sort of like a case by case basis, which one you should go for. Um, what about, um, no DI and then tech left, just to kind of trick him? I don't know if that works or not. Uh, do you know, like, how the Fox flowchart works at this percent? Out of interest, uh, or? Not really. Okay. I know that he can up air in place to cover a couple options. Like, uh, if, or if I tech to the left versus, like, DIing left. I, I saw KJH do something about it. I can't remember right now, though. Okay, so the basic flowchart for Fox here is he either up airs the tech in place, as, as this is as a read, um, or he just waits and then reacts to whichever way you, you roll. Uh, or if you miss tech, then he up airs the miss tech. Um, it's not until about, like, 50, I want to say, that he can up air the tech in place and then cover the rolls anyway. Um, so at this percent, first of all, it's a mix-up between whether you tech in place or tech roll. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. Okay. Um, ignoring all the KGH bullshit <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Like, you're playing Danilo, not KGH, so... Um, but yeah, so there's that to keep in mind, and then, um... So if he, um, so that's why you want to DI to the corner, because if he reads this tech in place, then you want to uh, be able to smash DI or, or slide off. The smash DI works by um, you SDI in the opposite direction to where he's moving. So if he's moving left, you want to smash DI right. Um, and the slide off DI works by you're near the edge, and then you hold down on the C stick and to the left. Like, it's just like normal slide off DI. Um, yeah. Uh, like on moth up air but it has some nuance to it where um if both hits hit you and you're by the corner you need to hold down on the first hit so that you don't get pushed off and then do the normal di um yeah, hex talked about that in his video he said that you can also use um c stick diagonally in to keep yeah. yourself on the platform technically or your ecb on the platform yeah yeah it's really good versus uh moth up air um from what i remember but um, yeah, Sechi has a video on like doing the slide off DI stuff on this. But um, I think it's good to learn both and like sort of figure out when each are good. Uh, the smash DI is probably easier to do, um, especially if you if you tech like here, then he has to move like full momentum left with his full hop to hit you. So then it's really easy to SDI to the right. Um, but like, he could have also maybe got it on this one. Um,
And then I think you DI the uh, path fine after. It's pretty hard for him to follow up. Do you know about um, you can shield poke with a pair here? Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I stopped going for it because I kept getting like only the first hit. So I wouldn't yeah. actually cop up. And I was just in the corner. Yeah, um, I haven't, I didn't used to go for it for a long time because I didn't understand how it works, but, um, it's just a spacing thing with the up air. You want to be hitting, like, his back foot, basically. Um, because if you, if you go too far to the right or you don't do the up air at the right timing, then it just either single hits, like you say, or it, um, or it just hits his shield and then he gets the shield drop aerial you. Um, does drift have anything to do with it, too? Like, if I, if I full momentum drift with the up air, doesn't it um, affect the lie? Yeah, so so if you uh, if you did the short up air here, for example, you'd want to be holding, like... You just want to be time... You're, like... You want to be doing the drift so that you hit his back foot with the second hit. Is, like, why it pokes. Um, so I think in spots like this, it's really good because you know he has time to shield, so he's probably going to shield. Um... So you know he, so because you know he's going to shield, like going for the up air pokes, pretty good. Yeah, this is another one of those like um, you like, yeah, yeah. I think I think this is the one we talked about actually, but um, but yeah. So just to make it like crystal clear in your mind, I would just approaching laser him. Here, yeah. and you'll hit him, <laughs> um, or you can like wave dash into him, shine. You, you can do whatever you want. I, the way I like to think about it is, um, imagine how long your up tilt takes here. That's how much time you have to work with, because um, because that's what he's dash dancing around, right? So he has to wait for this up tilt, and then he'll move in. So you get all that time to just do whatever you want. Um, so up tilt's like, I don't know. I think it's like twenty two frames or something like that. So that's easily. You want sorry. Zudair. Yeah, you could, um, the thing with Zudair is like it sort of come, covers the same timing as the up tilt. Um, so if you did the Zudair a bit later, then I think it'd be good. But um, you basically just don't want to throw something out in place um, at this timing, because that's what everybody like plays around at the moment. So you want to either move forward or move back or move up. Or you can you can also just delay the up tilt as well, and that's also good. Like if you just wait in place for a bit and then up tilt, um, yeah. or do, or throughout whatever. But yeah, just like being really aware of their waiting for this set amount of time, and then they're gonna come in is like really helpful, I think. Um, did you want to go over some of the punish game stuff just because? We've got like 10 minutes and I've not got any other like general things I want to talk yeah, about. I do have one question before we do that though. Yeah, um, sure. So how do you personally uh, analyze slash observe your opponent like mid game, like during the game? Because I feel like it's really hard to do in a tournament set, mm -hmm. but on that play, I think I can practice, you know, implementing some observational techniques that don't hinder my play too much. So I was thinking Mango talks about like lasering and then seeing what they do, but I feel like that's not like the only way you could analyze to your opponent mid match. Okay, so I feel like um, the end goal is like you know all of the situations that could happen, so then you just kind of adapt to them naturally because you're so like well versed and experienced that you know, you don't have to think about it. Like, that's the end goal. Um, so the way you build up to that is, uh, like, you can watch sets and then think about situations. Um, so it's it's not like... Um, I feel like the way you're describing it is kind of like you've got these set moves you can do to see what your opponent's doing, and they're the only ways you can get information. But I feel like you're, you're always getting information, like, regardless of what either person's doing, if that makes sense. Um, like you should always just be seeing what's on the screen and like taking it in um, I think 
the reason manga says about lasering and then see what they do is because it's, it's very like cut and dry because they're stuck for like however many frames and then you get to see what they do so it's quite easy but um stuff like that running shine i was talking about that's like another example of like that wasn't just like he got lasered and then he did it it was sort of like i knew the situation of like Falco's uh, disadvantage. So this guy likes to running shine when his opponent's um, not got much time to do something. Um, okay. I'm trying to. It's like a hard question to um, give you like a concrete answer for because it's to me and to a lot of uh, like top players, it's just like something you're always taking in. It's not like oh, I only need to think about his habits when he's off stage or when he gets lasered. Like, there's habits sort of everywhere. Um, basically, like, any time there's any sort of mix-up, that's when you should be, like, uh, trying to figure out what their habit is. And, of course, you don't do that all at once. Like, you don't go into a match, um, like, at your level, thinking about every single interaction that's happening and what their habits are. So I think starting with something like seeing what they do after lasers is, like, a really good start. Yeah, just, like, focusing on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm not at the level where I can just look at everything and play at the same time yet. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, I am trying to, like, be more observant of my opponent and slash, like, just watching the screen in general, but it's really hard to do that and then think about how to play the game at the same time. Yeah, so... Um... As far as I'm aware, everyone um, doesn't do both when they're playing, like, in tournament. Because, like, when, when you're in the zone, right, it just sort of happens and it becomes one of, like, you playing is you playing and you thinking at the same time. And you just sort of, it, like, molds together. I don't know if, if that's your, like, experience with when you're playing well, really well. Yeah, in, in tournament, but in friendlies, I try to play to learn. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so the way I'd go about that is I would be thinking about some of the... Uh, some of the most common scenarios that come up. So, for example, like we were saying, the different laser spacings, right? So I'd go into, like, 10 or 20 friendlies just thinking about what does this guy do at, at this laser spacing? Um, okay. And then you get to the point where that's just, like, recognition is like seeing a math problem and instantly knowing the answer sort of thing. And then that's when you that's when you move on to the next thing and you're like, okay, so when I whiff a move, what does this guy always do? Um and then you sort of build up like different patterns people have and like what you need to do against it. and and yeah just after a while once you practice it enough it just you know it's just an automatic thing that you do like if somebody says what do you do versus take laser up tilt my instant reaction is dash dance down it um it's not something i'm like going okay well this guy dash this guy turn around up tilts every time i laser him so next time i'm gonna do a dash dance down it because like you've already got hit at that point right it's like melee's too fast. It's not like Hearthstone, right, where you have like thirty seconds to think about what you're gonna do. It's like you know, you don't even get thirty frames sometimes. Um, so I think yeah, just breaking it down to one situation at a time and thinking about what this guy likes to do. Um, it definitely helps to have some sort of background knowledge, either from like talking to people or watching. VODs of like what the set of common options are just so it's like easier to pick out like you don't have to figure out what they're actually uh like what the situation is um and then you can also sort of use the respawn platform or any time between games as well any downtime to think like to try and work on your melee memory and like think about what this guy was doing um i think we did we talk about that in one of the lessons i think or... we did briefly okay yeah, so this would be a good instance of it where, like, you're working on in friendlies on, like, what does this guy do when I laser him at a roll length away? Uh, and then I just wait in between stocks or games and think about that. Uh, and, yeah, like I say, eventually it just becomes, like, second nature. Um, I think that's what people really mean when they talk about muscle memory. Um, people think about the tech skill side a lot of it, but they don't think about just, like, the playing the game side of it. Um, yeah, because a lot of times you just have to react in, in general. Yeah, like when at, at top level now, like if somebody hits the fuck off stage and they're being below the stage, like everybody knows to just go out and hit them. They don't think about like, oh, well, Falco can only up be here, so I should probably go out and hit him. It's just like instinct to run off the stage and 
hit him at this point. And that's the sort of like thing I think of when I think of muscle memory. It's just like planned sort of reactions to what's happening on the stage. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that if that helps you. Oh, help. That helps. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, it's kind of a hard question to, uh, to answer because, like, <laughs> <If I asked. laughs> yeah, exactly. Because, um, like I say, a lot of situations to me now are sort of like that where I don't even think about it. Um, I'm just thinking about other things, but so it's it's hard for me sometimes to um, like think about what I see intuitively that other people might not. Um, but yeah, uh, right, you've, you've built up this understanding. Yeah, exactly. And, like, I just went through the same process you went through. Like, I remember watching that manga video, like, two years ago or whatever, and I was like, yeah, I should probably watch what this guy does after every laser. And then I found it really overwhelming because I was like, well, I'm lasering him all the time and there's all of these situations that it's coming up in. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, just break it down into, like, you want to be as specific as possible as well um, just because then it's easier. Because um, if it's, like... You don't want to think about it like, what's this guy doing in neutral? Because there's like a billion different things happening, you know? Um, and I think that's where misconceptions like the thing you said about the running shine come up, right? Um, yeah. Where like that's a habit you thought you noticed, but you didn't like pin it down specifically to when he's doing it. So then it's, it's basically just clutter in your mind because it's like, you know, he's going to do it, but you've got no idea when. So then you're just kind of like scared of it. That makes a lot of sense, because instead of focusing on, like, just, like, if you're tech chasing, you can't focus on, like, every option. You have to focus on, like, one or two. Yeah. Uh, but, like, if I just watch his uh, his options, he probably only has, like, a couple. Yeah. That he does out of certain uh, situations. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, you definitely shouldn't overestimate how good people are at mixing up. Uh, a lot of the time winning a set is just about like working what this person's pattern is uh, you, you cut out for a second sorry. oh sorry no i was just saying a lot of the time winning like tournament sets is just sort of working out what this person's pattern is in certain situations like you can you can win sets off of knowing like two or three habits someone has uh, it's kind of crazy that way but um yeah because because like this guy's main game plan like we were just going back to what we were saying before his his pattern he's picked up on from you is that you always like attack from too far away so then he just plays to get you out of that spacing and then he's just gonna dash and grab you or full hop over you and hit you or something like that um okay. so yeah that's just an example of like him adapting to you and like picking up on on a certain situation um this guy also takes drug fox lessons. I'm pretty sure, so he probably <laughs> stole that from <laughs> stole that from uh, drug fox. But, um, but yeah, hopefully you can uh, fight back. Yeah, good thing I have access <laughs> to his lessons. Yeah, yeah, you literally just download him. Um, yeah. Okay. Was there anything else you uh, wanted to talk about, or? Uh. You. I, I know we don't have like that much time, so I won't bug you about the punish stuff too much. But I get over a bit. What, what do you think is like the biggest, the main takeaway for practicing my punish right now? Uh, let me just watch it back quickly. Um, the up tilts on the platform were pretty important. Um, but you said you're already working on that, so um, I won't go over that too much. Yeah, I'll just watch like a couple of stocks and I can sort of just pick out which are the important things. I feel like this has happened a couple of times where like you hit him and he... This is really common actually. You, you hit someone, you hit Fox and he DIs like down. And then a lot of the time the like mid-high level option is to double jump and then side B sweet spot. Or like side B to ledge. Um, and a lot of the time you end up just lasering and then not being there to hit him for side being. Um, so it feels like you've kind of got your priorities wrong here where you're lasering to sort of cover him up being or jumping high. 
when like the best option for him is to side beat to ledge because then he just like gets back for free basically um so i think when you hit him like this like specifically when he di is down and he's really far down you want to just get over to the ledge as soon as possible to try and down smash this or run off shine or grab the ledge or something like that um yeah i've recognized this a little bit but i haven't practiced it yeah it happens a lot um if you back air someone on the top platform as well and they di away they always just like a lot of people just fall down and then fall side beat to the ledge and you're too busy a lot of the time like jump off lasering and doing all this stuff to cover them up being high when in reality the the best option for them is to go low and just get to ledge um because they don't want to take this like laser mix up up here and then maybe die they just want to get back to stage as soon as possible um so another um, example of it is if you're on top platform and you hit someone in the DIY, way, you want to just instantly jump down there and fast forward through the platform and get to the ledge as fast as possible. Or like get to a position where you can cover it. Um, I think that happens later in this game as well. Does F-Tilt actually cover um, the side B if before they reach the ledge? Uh, I feel like if I down smash they can just sweet spot and then I get hit for it. They can sweet spot to pretty much anything. Um, just because of how Fox's ledge grab works. Um, but sweet spawning, especially on battlefield, is very hard. Um, so you can do stuff like run off double jump aerials, they cover sweet spot, or you can uh, grab the ledge as well. Um, but most people in that situation don't sweet spot anyway, so um, you can just get down smash a lot of the time. This is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I don't approach him, I'll, I should send you another game. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll send you a game where he just, if I don't approach him, he'll just sit there for, for like, until I move, basically. Yeah. You just, like I said, just shoot him or uh, bait him. Um, There hasn't been any like really big openings, <laughs> I feel like, yeah. for a bit. Um, can you play this guy like pretty often as well? Or Yeah, this, well, like... he likes to play on weekends more, but uh, mm -hmm. we get really good connection usually. So. Okay. Like 17 ping and stuff, so. Yeah, because it's really useful to be able to play the person that we like do a review of a, of a game against, just because then you can like really practice all of the stuff. Whereas, like, if you end up playing some other fox, then, like, they might not play like this guy. They might play, like, Mango Rushdown style or whatever. And then everything I've told you is, like, <laughs> kind of useless. Well, I like, know everything, but, but you get what I mean. It, yeah, well, yeah, it's the specific uh, matchup against them. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there wasn't too many. I'd, I'd say the ledge thing was the main one, then. Um, okay. I think there was... It might have been versus the Falco... Uh, versus Flash, maybe, that you didn't cover the instant side B, but yeah, that's just something to think about versus, um, whenever anyone DIs away on a combo, they really like to go to the ledge. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, okay, I guess I'll write up the, uh, the notes then, or whatever. Um, but yeah, definitely try and play this guy, like, over the weekend, I think, and try and, you know, take a step back every stock, think about what he's doing at certain ranges. Um, I would definitely try and abuse that thing where he like waits after you whiff as well. Um, it's really hard to get out of the habit of up tilting, but once you do, like you, you basically reverse the situation. Um, yeah. So yeah. Oh, I think uh, Flash found the clip. Actually, I can watch it quickly. <laughs> of course he did. Um, Flash is the clip master. <laughs> 
Okay, it's, it's up. Can you still see my screen or not? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Yeah, you see how I do like a baby ledge dash? Uh, I'm sorry, can you replay it? It, it stops like at the beginning. Is it playing now? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I see it now. Yeah, it, it wasn't like a really good one, but like the points there that like you see how where he spaced was like perfect to get around a um like a full length ledge dash. Oh my god, that punish. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, like, if he stands there, that's, like, a perfect distance to, like, up tilt me. So then I just, like, space further away from him. <laughs> Funny punish, but yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's good then. Um, I do need to respond to your DM from before as well, so I'll get on that um, tonight as well. Oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll see you in a bit then, dude. Alright, peace.